everyone and welcome to the first episode of Fertility Chats with Dr. Kubis Kutsia. For those of you who don't know Dr. Kutsia, he is a fertility specialist and he's been in practice since 1995. So welcome and thank you for joining us. Um, so after my own personal journey with infertility, as Dr. No and miscarriages, I've decided to create an awareness campaign just to educate the society on the fertility issues and hopefully we can have an impact on someone's life. So um, some of the questions that I think a lot of people wonder about is firstly, a lot of women only realize that they have fertility issues um, only after a few months of trying to fall pregnant and start a family. So um, how would you, what advice would you give to someone who wants to get ahead of these issues? Are there any tests that they can do to find out if they have issues before trying to start a family and only finding out then? Thank you, Nadia. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, I think it's always important uh, to know when you're trying to fall pregnant that early, when you're in your early 20s compared to late 30s, there will be a difference in fertility potential. We know that fertility will decline by more or less 40% from early 20s to late 30s. So I think it's also important to plan uh, when you want to fall pregnant. So uh, patients uh, attending a fertility clinic at an advanced age um, should also know that we can't fix uh, age-related fertility in an IVF clinic. So I would say the most important is obviously to live healthily, uh, have a good diet, look uh, at your body mass index, uh, um, do not smoke uh, mild alcohol use, etc. And then uh, try and prevent things that can affect your egg reserve. And one of the most common things uh, that we see these days are operations. So patients undergoing surgery for, uh, for example, uh, ovarian cysts, uh, repeated operations can damage the ovarian reserve. And there is a blood test that you can do to see what your egg count is, okay. so that you can pick up when that egg count is starting to uh, decline. Uh, and it's one of the ways that you can. Obviously a routine gynae examination with your gynecologist, um, uh, a yearly checkup can also be helpful to identify when your egg reserve is starting to decline. Alright, thank you so much. Then my second question to you is for a healthy man and woman, on average, how many months of unsuccessful trying should they reach out to a specialist and how long does it usually take if, like I say, a healthy man and woman, how long should they try um, before they know that there is something wrong? So what is a healthy man and a woman? <laughs> Someone who has been cleared by the gynecologist to say, hey, yeah. no yeah. obvious issues. Okay, so first of all, um, we, we normally take, as I've explained in the first question, age is very important. So we say patients trying for a period of six months and you're older than 35 should definitely seek the attention uh, of a fertility specialist. If you're younger than 35, we, it's usually one year. But then it's common sense. If you have a problem, if you don't have regular cycles, you don't ovulate, then obviously you have to come uh, and seek help earlier. Um, I think another misconception is also patients that think they don't want to go to the fertility clinic um, too soon because the doctor is going to suggest fertility treatment, IVF as uh, everybody calls it. And, and that's not the truth. We really try and help patients to improve their natural, natural fertility, uh, whether it is through medical treatment, help them to ovulate, whether it is through surgical treatment, removal of endometriosis, etc., uh, to help them to fall pregnant spontaneously. If that does not help, then obviously we have an array of things that we can do uh, um, to help them with treatment. 
So on the average, our uh, patients trying after one year, about 85, uh, 80, um, uh, after six months, about 80% of patients will fall pregnant. Um, after one year, 85%. And the balance, if they keep on trying, we, we do see sporadic pregnancies up to 48, uh, 48 months uh, later. So that's why it's important if you're 35 and older, try it for six months, see your fertility specialist, or if you're younger than 35, after one year of trying. Okay. Then, um, birth control. I know a lot of um, dermatologists and GPs prescribe birth control to teenagers for the help of acne treatment, but how does that affect your fertility at a later stage when you are trying to have a family? Can it have a negative impact, the prolonged usage of birth control, and how long is it safe to use it for before it starts affecting your fertility? Yeah, Nadia, I think it's always important to have all the information, you know, so some of those patients being prescribed uh, the oral contraceptive pill for acne is not for acne only <laughs> and obviously not always disclosing all the information to, to, the, to the mother and so on. So we know that the risk of falling pregnant is outweighs the, any side effects of the oral contraceptive pill. But in general, we do not use the pill before the menarche and that would be before a uh, young girl starts having regular cycles. And the reason for that is the premature closure of the long bones is a potential problem if you start the pull too early, that the patient won't reach her peak uh, adult height. But as soon as she starts her menstruation, 95% of the adult height is already uh, reached. In terms of the oral contraceptive pull, there are obviously benefits in using it that can prevent fertility problems and not cause fertility problems on the long term and that would be if there are any signs of endometriosis uh, patients that are prone to ovarian cyst formation and then ending up having surgery as I've uh, alluded to before uh, so I think a careful decision must be made whether to, when, whether to start it and when to start it mm -hmm. and if the indications are uh, uh, solid, then I think the benefits outweigh, uh, outweigh the uh, disadvantages. That's very important. I may, sorry, I may uh, also just mention uh, the only problem with long term use of the pill uh, is the resumption of uh, menstruation. Uh, it can take a little bit longer, but as soon as you start menstruating again, uh, it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, okay. Then Fertility and gynecology specialists are often referred to as female doctors, but how often does the fertility problem actually lie within the male patient and not necessarily the female? And what are some of those issues that come about in males that could affect the outcome of the pregnancy? Yeah, definitely. Uh, obviously, men uh, don't want to acknowledge that it's a male problem. But uh, up to 35% of cases are mixed male and female, and about 10% of cases are male only. So therefore it's also important, uh, we see lots of patients coming to the fertility clinic trying for 3-4 years, but the husband never had a sperm test before, uh, because he says it's not his problem, you know. So obviously um, there, there are very good evidence that we know that we have to examine the male and the female at the same time and also if there's a male problem it takes about 84 days for new sperm to form so the sooner you pick up a problem the sooner you can fix that problem nice. yeah and in terms of males uh, currently the biggest problems that we see is obviously uh, uh, males using anabolic steroids and testosterone and building the muscles and obviously that is a killer for fertility. Um, other problems may be uh, from birth and the same the testis may be a problem, uh, injury to the testicles. Um, the number one cause is testosterone usage and anabolic steroids.
And smoking oh. and alcohol, does that at all affect male fertility? Yeah, there's no good evidence, you know, but we also know that the general health benefits of not smoking mm. is, is the only reason why you shouldn't smoke. Okay, so lastly, the advice that everyone give women who wants to fall pregnant is relax, don't stress, if you stress too much you won't fall pregnant. How does stress really affect infertility? Yeah. <laughs> A difficult question. Um, so first of all, um, if you are labelled as being infertile, there's already a level of stress. And those patients, um, the patient, or the, the, whether it's the female or the male, the, uh, who's contributing to that fertility or who's been shown to be the problem, mm -hmm. there can be significant anxiety, depression, etc. Some would compare it to somebody undergoing cancer treatment. So you can just imagine the amount of uh, anxiety and stress associated with it. Also that two week wait to find out if you are pregnant is yes, also a very yeah. stressful time. I always say to patients this is going to be a roller coaster ride mm -hmm. and you know when you go through the dips and the troughs <laughs> you know different emotions mm -hmm. but um, and that's why it's important how can we um, alleviate that stress is to have clear channels of communication allow the patient to ask questions mm -hmm. give them as much information as possible make them comfortable in the clinic uh, undergoing the process and that all starts from the receptionist right through to the cleaner and mm -hmm. by the way the doctor as well but uh, unforeseen circumstances <coughs> like a pressure at work or something happening in your family and then you're just really under stress what are the limits like when do you know this amount of stress will disrupt your ability to fall pregnant is yeah. there a limit like that no i mean it's, it's like the uh, what is the uh, how long is a piece of string you know um, a certain amount of stress is good it makes people perform better but there's a limit to it and that where that happens uh, obviously some, some patients can take more than others and it also depends on the um, social circumstances it depends on finances and just now that I mentioned finances um, one would think that the finances is a big problem but they are they've done studies uh, especially overseas because in South Africa we don't get much for free uh, where they've got uh, paid for cycles so it's it's free cycles mm -hmm. but the dropout rate uh, even though they get the cycles for free the dropout rate is still high and it just shows you that psychological stress involved in the program get to some patients so um, acupuncture massages all of those things, although it hasn't been shown conclusively in studies to make a difference, mm -hmm. I think if it works for you, do it, you know. Um, if it is going on a long holiday before you start your IVF treatment, do it. Thank you so much, Doctor. So that concludes episode one and we look forward to seeing you on episode two. And if you have any questions that you would like for me to ask Dr. Kutsian, please feel free to contact me.